Hello and welcome to another screencast with me, Mr. Huff and Puff. This one is on levers. So a lever is a rigid bar that rotates around a fulcrum to apply a force to a load. In the body are the levers that you're going to need to know for your GCSE. The lever is the bone. The fulcrum can sometimes be called a pivot, but the fulcrum is normally a joint. And the effort is the force that has been applied to the lever by the muscles. What you're trying to move is known as the load. Now, what you are going to need to know for your GCSE are the fulcrum, the effort, and the load. Okay, those are the three key terms that you're going to need to know. It is important to mention that we're not just talking about levers within the body. You can create levers in a sporting environment using other equipment. So um, by holding a tennis racket or a hockey stick, you are creating levers outside the body, using levers of the body to create another lever. There are three classes of lever, a first class lever, a second class lever, and a third class lever. Now, the best way I've seen to remember these, I've taught uh, my students at school, is to remember one seesaw, first class lever, two wheelbarrows, second class lever, and three fishing rods, third class lever. Now, this is due to where the fulcrum, load, and effort are positioned. Now, on the screen behind me, I'll flick through some different photographs to be able to show that to you in a bit more detail but that is what I recommend you use to remember the three classes of lever. One seesaw, first class lever. Two wheelbarrows, second class lever. Three fishing rods, third class lever. So let's talk about first class levers first. Now with a first class lever, the fulcrum is between the load and the effort which is why we talk about one seesaw. You can imagine a seesaw, okay? So a bar along the middle, the fulcrum in the middle, the load one end, the effort the other end, that is what a first class lever looks like. An example of that in the body is in your neck. So if you're trying to head a ball in football or you're nodding your head, that is an example of a first class lever. So a first class lever example would be heading the ball. The load is the ball coming onto your head to head the ball. The fulcrum are the atlas and axis bones in your neck, allowing that movement to take place. And the effort are your muscles moving you onto the ball. So as the ball comes down, that's the load. There's the fulcrum in your neck. There's the effort of the muscles, okay? So that is an example of a first class lever in your body. And I hope you will use that one in your exam if it asks for that. Let's look at second class levers. Now, second class levers are the two wheelbarrows. So imagine a wheelbarrow, okay? The load in a wheelbarrow goes in the middle of the wheelbarrow, okay? The fulcrum is one end where the wheel of the wheelbarrow is. I know the wheel is turning around, but it's not moving. It's a fixed point. And the effort is the person lifting up the wheelbarrow. That is what a second class lever looks like. So the load is in the middle, the effort is one end, and the fulcrum is the other end. Remember, it's the pivot. It's the point that probably is quite stationary. That is a, uh, a visual representation and description of a second class lever, two wheelbarrows. So a sporting example or a physical example of a second class lever um, is as follows. Basically, if you can imagine yourself lifting yourself up on your toes and down again, maybe even going up a step, okay? Up on your toes and then again, the fulcrum is the ball of your foot, okay? That place is quite stationary, it's where your movement is taking place. The effort is your gastrocnemius muscle lifting you up, and the load is obviously your body weight moving you down towards the with gravity. Now, if you're doing it with weights, okay, sometimes people do it in the gym, they have weights in their hands and they do it, that would be the load as well, okay? So just run through that again, the fulcrum in a second class lever, sporting example, is the ball of your foot, the load is the weight and the gravity moving you down, because that's where it wants to go, and the effort is your gastrocnemius muscle lifting you up. Let's move on to third class levers, three fishing rods, remember. The first thing we have third, th third class levers, sorry, 
is that they're the most common type of lever in the body. They are used for the majority of movements that you do. The effort is between the load and the fulcrum, okay? So if you think about a fishing rod, okay, the fulcrum is you holding the rod, the load is a fish on the end, and the effort is in the rod. That's what it looks like when you try to draw it, um, and that's what you need to imagine. The fulcrum is stationary, holding that rod. The effort is the rod doing the work, bending, doing the work, and the load is the other end. A really good sporting example of a third class lever is a bicep curl. So if you imagine you've got a bicep, uh, a weight in your arm, in your hand, sorry, the fulcrum is your elbow, the weight is the load, and the effort are your biceps producing the effort, the movement to do that curl. Now levers allow two major things to happen. They allow your movement, but in two ways. They allow heavier loads to be moved or something to be moved quicker and faster that you wouldn't be able to do without a lever. Now second class levers operate at a mechanical advantage. What this means is they allow you to move heavier weights than you would be able to do normally, but they don't have a huge range of movement. Third class levers operate in a different way altogether. They operate at something called a mechanical disadvantage. Now they allow you to move something quickly um, and with speed faster than you would do normally, but they don't allow you to move something that's particularly heavy that is difficult to do with a third class lever. So let's look at some uh, examples of that in physical activity. Second class lever allows you to lift a heavy load, but not a massive range of movement. So if you remember two wheelbarrows, so think about a press up position, okay, or a plank. The load is in the middle, okay, it's the weight of your body. The fulcrum is your feet, your feet aren't really going to move, okay. The effort are your arms, okay. You can hold a pretty strong position there, just on your arms you might be lifting um, your body weight, okay. So that's all relative as well, but that is quite a large amount of weight. Now you can't move a huge amount of distance in that position, but you can hold a large amount of weight using that second class lever system. If you then think of a third class lever system, for example, kicking a ball in football or rugby, the leg moves very quickly. Now that is a good example of a third class lever. The fulcrum would be the hip, okay? The effort is the gastrocnemius, the load is probably the ball in this instance, or, or, or um, your lower leg moving. Now in football and rugby, to get a long or powerful kick, yes, the muscle strength makes a difference, but actually it's the speed of the leg through the movement that allows the distance of the pass or shots or whatever it might be, um, to, to, to be affected. So if you kick the ball with, with, and you move your leg slowly, it wouldn't go very far. If you move your leg quickly, it will. So the third class lever system of the leg kicking a ball allows you to kick the ball a distance, okay? That is the major difference. And that opposite a mechanical disadvantage because you are using a lot of effort to produce the final outcome, to move the load. So it is a lot of effort to make to take a full-on kick. Okay? You have to move a lot, it takes a lot out of you if you did it for a long period of time. To hold a plank, most of you could probably do a plank now for 10 seconds. Okay, so you can hold a heavy weight for a long period of time. I hope that makes sense. Now the comments are turned on in these videos on YouTube, so feel free to leave me a question or provide me a comment on the video. Um, and I will try to get back to you when I can. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video on levers. Um, feel free to contact me if you want to or sub subscribe to my podcasts on iTunes. And if you search for Mr. Huff and Puff on Google, you'll find some of my MP3 podcasts on there as well. Thank you for watching and I hope that all makes sense to you. Good luck with your GCSE this year.